Remember, this is left plane. This is left plane. Exactly. Yes. This is left plane. And this one is right plane. Right plane. So remember, the acromial part always lies on the left hand side of the body, and the sternal part always lies on the medial side. So it will make the sternal pedicular joint and the acromial part will make articulation with this small expanded area. The small expanded area makes articulation with the acromial part of the scapula. So we will make a joint which is called as the acromioclavicular joint. And this part of joint which we said that this is articular and have a disc, have a central disc which is called as the, which is made up of fibrocartilage. You can say that it is fibrocartilage disc and it is articular and when, and it is synovial as well. And this joint, it makes, is called as the sternoclavicular joint and is a type of synovial joint. Clear? Yes. So sir. this was our discussion about the clavicle and site determination of the clavicle as well as the pathology or clinical relevance that it can fracture in the middle two third easily by any injury, by any we can say accident in the middle two third area. Sir, we need to do the smart hmm? It has a different landmarks on this bone. This is uh, very critical for fracture as well. Take the anatomically that is uh, can be fractured. And I have told in the previous class, previous classes that uh, where is the part that is fractured. And most probably in the middle two third, that area is very prone for fracture. If there is an accident, if a person falls, so because this gives stability to the shoulder pectoral region. So if it is damaged, then the whole biomechanics will be disturbed of the human body. So this is the this is the clavicle. Uh, later on, we will uh, discuss the side determination of the clavicle. There. Which part of the clavicle is this? Either it is right clavicle or it is left clavicle. So we will discuss it. So uh, remember, there are two ends of the clavicle. Two ends. One is called as the sternal end, and the other one is called as the acromial. So there is difference between the two. This is called as the this one end. This is called as the medial end of the clavicle or the sternal end of the clavicle. This part is somewhat expanded part. This is not, you can say, flattened. This is rounded, expanded and articular surface because it gives articulation to the manipulum sternae and, and form the and form a joint and form a synovial type of joint which is called as the sternoclavicular joint at its sternal end. So this part is covered this part is covered by a cartilage which is fibrocartilage and we can simply say that there is an articular disc between the sternal surface of the clavicle and the manibulum part of the sternum so there is a articular disc so there is a articular disc which will keep it and make a disc Are you sure? So repeat the sentence we say that this is the sternal end. This is the sternal end of the clavicle. Got it? Yes. It is expanded. It is rounded. It is a big part as compared to the lateral part, which is which is flattened. This is called as the acromial part or acromial end. And this is the sternal end. So the sternal end is expanded. It is rounded. It is articular surface, which give articulation with the manipulum sternae of the sternum. And there is an articular disc between it. Which is the which is made up of fibrocartilage, so that is also termed as the fibrocartilage disc. You clear up to it. Then you will further extend to its another part that is the lateral part, and this part is called as the acromion part. This is flattened. It has a different surface. It has this clavicle, this whole part of the clavicle. This has four surfaces. Four surfaces. But uh, let us uh, proceed to that surface. First, we will discuss about the <coughs> the uh, the acromion end of the clavicle. So this is flattened. It has two parts. The anterior one third. This is concave. This is concave forward. This is concave forward. The anterior lateral. You can also say that the lateral one third. It is concave forward. Why is posterior? 
posterior part of this acromion, this is convex backward. So it has two surfaces, the anterior and the posterior. The anterior is concave in the one third or the lateral one third and convex in the posterior one third area and convex posterior which is you can say that it is convex backward, it is concave forward. The middle part, the anterior part, the anterior part of this clavicle and the middle nearly two third of the forward. The middle part, the anterior part, the anterior part of this clavicle and the middle nearly two third of the middle two third. It is convex anterior. This is convex anterior, you can see it. This is convex. And its posterior part, that is concave. That is, the superior part is concave and the anterior is convex. Then if you come towards the acromion, the sternal end, the middle end, the middle one third end, that is concave. <coughs> and the inferior end of this clavicle, that is convex posterior. Clear? Then there are different landmarks, different landmarks on the on this area. There are uh, you can say that on the lateral end, on the lateral end, uh, first discuss the lateral end, you will discuss the clavicle, the medial end. This is this is the bone. If we rotate it up to 180 degrees, then we can come towards the inferior part of the clavicle and in the inferior part there are different landmarks both on the external end as well as on the lateral end of the clavicle so on the external part there is the medial this end medial one third end near to the joint where it makes a joint this nearby area of the sternum it gives there is the point for the internal jugular vein that is for the that is for no that is for the internal jugular vein and two other structures the superior the upper part of the superior vena cava the proximal part of the superior vena, vena cava or first part of the superior vena cava also lies here and two other structures the superior the upper part of the superior vena cava the proximal part of the superior vena cava or first part of the superior vena cava also lies here and the internal jugular vein and the third structure which I am forgetting now at this moment but later we will discuss the third structure as well so this is the this is you can say bounded by a capsule the fibrous capsule so this is sinoidal joint we say that this is sinoidal type of joint so the posterior part of this medial end gives the fibrous capsular part which was articulated with the Medial sternum and a capsular joint and make a capsular joint. So capsular joint is always sinoidal. Then further if you proceed, then there will be a groove on the inferior part or the inferior surface. There is a groove which gives attachment to a specific muscle. That muscle is called as the subclavius muscle. There is a groove that is not most probably visible on most of the bones. And this is artificial type of bone, so it's hard to identify. But here on this portion, here lies the subclavius muscle in this groove. And there are two lips of this groove which gives the uh, attachment uh, to the, you can say, uh, of the fascia. There is a fascia. It gives facial attachment, these two lips. One is, the, one, is the, one is this lips towards the superior side and one is on the inferior side. So there are two lips. gives to the facial attachment. And the groove contains a specific type of muscle that is called as the subclavius muscle. You are clear up here. Yes. Coming towards the lateral part on the inferior surface of the clavicle. Coming towards the lateral part, which is called as the which is called as the acromion part, and it is expanded. So you can the interior part is smooth, it is flattened, it is smooth. But if we rotate it, to 180 degrees, you will see that this area is rough and this rough area is specified for the attachment of different structures and what are those structures? You can say 
there is another we can say landmark here that is very clear let me highlight it there is a prominency on the lateral part lateral third area of the clavicle on the inferior surface this is called as the tubercle this is the conoid tubercle we say that there are there are there is one tubercle on the lateral one third area of the clavicle on the inferior part and this is called as the conoid tubercle and next to the conoid tubercle we can see a, a ridge which is not specified here but on most uh, clavicles that is the real clavicle that can easily be distinguished that that will be a line which is all the way down all the way forward we can say all the way forward that line is called as the trapezoid line trapezoid line so this is the conoid tubercle this is the trapezoid line so with the same name there are two ligaments one is called as the conoid ligament and the other one is called as the trapezoid ligament which is the coraco clavicular ligament parts of the coraco clavicular ligament ke ye do ligaments hain so ye yahan pe attach karte hain this anterior part the volume sole ke gives attachment to the pectoralis major fibers the inferior part this groove gives attachment to the subclavius muscle the inferior part this groove gives attachment to the subclavius muscle and these two the tubercle which is called the conoid tubercle on the same name the same ligament attaches and the conoid ligament and the trapezoid ridge the trapezoid ridge gives attachment to the same name the trapezoid ligament which is the coraco-clavicular ligaments <coughs> you uh, clear up here yes, now we further distinguish another structure if we then we again we rotate this bone to its superior aspect the superior aspect of the clavicle this is smooth and the inferior is rough because of different attachments so we say that this is called as the shaft of this clavicle this whole area is the shaft you can also divide it into three portions like this into three portion the lateral one third the middle two third and the the middle two third and the middle one third clear then coming towards again towards the lateral side towards the lateral side lateral side which is the acromion acromion end which is the acromion process this is we say that this is flattened this is broader and flattened and the sternal part is rounded this is expanded in articular surface and this is flattened and we we say that it is concave forward in the one third area lateral one third area and convex backward in the lateral one third area on the superior aspect then the anterior aspect is the skin which subcutaneous skin next to the skin but on palpation you can palpate these convexities on your chest wall anybody if any doctor if you palpate it you can easily distinguish you can easily clarify the structures that this is the convex part then this is the convex part of the clavicle by on a normal human being not on the skeleton i am talking about the human being the skeleton is clear you can see here it is visible but in human being in human not be it is hidden that is subcutaneous and the parts which you can palpate that can easily be is convexity we say it's convexity yes. this is the convexity and this is the convexity this is on the acromion part and this is on the sternal part so the anterior surface we say that this is concave and the in the anterior middle third which moves all the way forward and the lateral one third it is concave here on on this aspect in the posterior it is concave and on the lateral one third of the acromion end it is convex so starting from this convex part it is convex posterior clear of this respect 
then the anterior aspect give attachment to the anterior fibers of the deltoid, while the posterior aspect of this clavicle on the on its lateral part gives attachment to the specific muscle that are called trapezius. So the trapezius fibers are attached here. Not only attached here, but it partly some cover this area as well. Partly cover this area as well. The rest of the structure that is smooth. The rest of the clavicle is smooth. The fibers of the trapezius coming all the way forward here to here, the rest of the structure remains as such, which we call it that that is smooth. The interior part, the interior this concave part, it gives the attachment to specific fibers, the interior fibers of the deltoid. <coughs> this is the interior, this is the deltoid belly. So it gives attachment to the interior fibers of the deltoid. Clear? Yes. There are certain other vessels which passes through these, these grooves, which are we say that on the posterior spectrum. There are certain vessels. And also the brachial plexus as well. Some part of the brachial plexus lies over here. The we say that there is another uh, ligament, the specific ligament if I recall in my mind, that is the sternoclavicular ligament, I think the sternoclavicular ligament on the sternal part inferior part of the sternum and the first rib give attachment to the first rib it will maintain the biomechanics of this clavicle not to elevate the clavicle it will limit the elevation of the pectoral girdle okay? yes sir there up to here now the surfaces, the superior surface of the clavicle, the anterior surface, the superior surface, then the posterior surface and the inferior surface. There are four surfaces. There are four surfaces. This is the anterior surface, then this is the superior surface, then Turn it. This is the posterior surface, and if we turn it wholly and sorry, uh, 180 degree, you will face the inferior surface. So there are four surfaces of this clay. So you can say that this is a type of long bone as well. This is a type of long bone, but in long bone, we differentiate into different parts, different you can say areas, different landmarks, different attachment sites, and it's important uh, where, where it's important it is. So we say that this is the sternal and this is the chromium. So which now coming towards the side determination of the clavicle. Which side of this clavicle, which uh, side of bone this is? We say that this is also called a collar bone. Collar bone. So which side of bone this is? Remember there is not an sternal end on this side. Sternal end is always lies on the medial side. And also you can if it is placed over here on the chest, anterior chest wall, then you can easily palpate these structures, the convexities and the concavities here, and the convexities here, that is on the chest wall. And the rest of the structure is subcutaneous, that is next to the skin, which subcutaneous means next to the skin. 